giving uh, this paper for review to people who have already done studies in the area so <clears> maybe <throat> if the peer reviewer is the person to about whom you have done a lot of criticism then you are rejected for sure so that kind of mistake should not happen to you so mm -hmm. you should study the uh, you can very mildly like put that your study is superior but uh, harsh criticism should be avoided because as at least for uh, this particular reason sir what is the difference between commentary and uh, short communication okay a short communication is again these are all very loose terms that used very differently by different journals short communication is usually like brief communication brief research and all they are all research papers only but they are maybe within 2000 words not very long maybe you have done a final review a chart review or maybe you have done a small online survey and all so you you will not be able to present that in maybe 2500 words 3000 words and all so you are presenting it as a short communication in our journal we don't have a division even whatever even if it is 1500 words we may consider it as an original paper so there are there is a general wise difference commentary is different commentary may be of two three types one is you are giving a commentary about some of the articles the journal recently published suppose the journal recently had a special special issue on alcoholism so you have some criticism of those papers as a whole then you can write a commentary or you can write a commentary about any uh, issue of current relevance maybe uh, covid vaccination uh, what is the what is wrong with the, the uh, india government's covid vaccination policy so that that you can write as a commentary so commentary can be of different types that is entirely different from short communication short communication is usually a research paper while commentary is not a research paper thank you very much sir thank you for sharing your uh, uh, knowledge regarding how to rate the articles for publication yeah. sir, there thank is you. one question about the qualitative study Qualitative study is important. Only thing is you have to use the corresponding checklist. There is a checklist for the correct for a qualitative study. You should follow that. And most of the other points are relevant for qualitative studies also. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Other speakers are waiting, sir. Yeah, we are. Okay, okay. Thank you okay. very much. Thanks, thank thanks for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, uh, organizers, for giving me opportunity for moderating this session. Thank you very much. Over to Dr. Ravi sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So now I request at this outset, uh, I request uh, Dr. D Dilip Ravi uh, to take over the session. Uh, the second session uh, over to sir over to you sir thank you dr vijay the prompt to his holiness a very good afternoon to one and all present here virtually i feel privileged to be a part of this webinar first of all i thank to dr sadul amir it was an insightful presentation it is a great eye opening session on how to write a publication article. You have given an in-depth knowledge regarding this. Once again, I thank you, sir, for the good presentation. In continuation with the research communication learning sequence, next we have an eminent personality, Dr. Bala Baskar with us. He is presently working as a professor of anesthesiology at Vijayanagar Institute of Medical Sciences, Ballari. He has been the president of Indian Society of Anesthesiologists, and he is an accomplished researcher and educator for excellence. He has more than 25 publications and is a sought after speaker for research workshops. I hereby welcome you, sir, for delivering your presentation. Over to you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Pranams to the Swamiji. Am I audible clearly? Yes, sir. To continue, sir. Thanks for the nice introduction. Um, thanks to Dr. Kavita Raja, who contacted me about a uh, few days ago. And she discussed about uh, this program, and I was very happy to accept it. And thanks to the uh, JSS uh, Mahavidyalaya, the other associated uh, uh, medical institutions and the faculty who are participating in today's program and all the viewers of this program. 
and uh, much of my work is also lightened by an excellent presentation by dr shahul in fact there is lot of overlap because when i saw the program chart which is prepared uh, for this uh, session today's and uh, the next uh, two day session i found there is uh, definitely a risk or a need for uh, repetition of some of the uh, you know slides uh, then i thought uh, it's also good for uh, me as well as uh, the viewers here because the thought will go into their mind and uh, they will remember all the points which are discussed by the specialist better so that's the way it is uh, today for me also on uh, this presentation is uh, of course uh, i am talking in terms of uh, i was also editor of our indian journal of anesthesia previously in the last about 5 uh, years ago so i learned uh, about uh, how uh, the authors commit mistakes and how they can be you know pushed up they can be guided properly so that they also become good authors later on and their articles can also be published so my focus today is on uh, those people who have got difficulty in uh, submitting articles uh, article which is publishable and uh, have given some examples uh, with uh, from uh, journals which are open access journals uh, and it's purely for educational purposes i am not trying to find out mistakes because they have been published already so i said that a such a huge field competitive world now uh, people are trying to publish and publish and not just in medical sciences and ayush uh, and other groups there are publications in basic sciences and engineering and everywhere the problem is uh, the struggle is also because uh, the acceptance rate in some of the quality journal what we call as call as uh, the high impact factor journals is very less so not more than 25% of the article at the best would be accepted and rest are 75% would not be accommodated in those journals i am not telling rejecting i said accommodated because each journal has got its own uh, you know focus and the standards which i think we should not be commenting upon so in fact more than 2.2 million biomedical papers are submitted per year for publication and uh, the number of journals is more than 20000 so if i talk in terms of the some of uh, the journals uh, in the current group today's discussion group we have got lot of nursing journals we have got lot of uh, ayurvedic journals we have got physiotherapy journals we have got uh, you know homeo journals everything is there so we got such a wide scope which is available and again as dr shahul was uh, suggesting in the beginning which one to choose where i should be submitting where i got the greatest uh, you know chance of publication these are the things which will confuse us in the beginning so some of the points as i told you already majority of the points are covered by dr shahul i will try to skip some of them also because there is lot of overlap but uh, there are some things which probably again you can remember and try to do better when you actually take the publication career further how to get the articles accepted first of all uh, um, there are no real shortcuts okay trying to publish in a quality journal there is never a shortcut so i will discuss uh, the aspects here in uh, two broad headings one will be basically about the research itself which you have performed the type of the research and the quality of the research which you have performed and which you are trying to publish and second one which is also more important is how you prepare the manuscript and submit so the second part has got some <coughs> sorry repetition as already uh, informed by me so about the type of research so if you can look at this uh, illustration it is just a sample so we broadly classify them as primary and secondary research in medical practice and on the left side you can see the basic research the clinical trials and epidemiological trials so for example those of us on the clinical side of the medical field normally we will do clinical trials and uh, we will not be doing much of epidemiological trials but again some of our colleagues who are in for example what we call as para clinical and pre clinical they are more likely to undertake epidemiological trials and basic research if you for example you heard about indian institute of science being one of the best research institutes in the world they do research in the basic sciences also so it's also extremely difficult and tough and this all constitute what is known as the primary research and you will look at the other side we have got the secondary research secondary research is trying to collect the evidences from all the primary research compile compare and give a statement that becomes a secondary research so these are called as normally the reviews and the meta analysis among the reviews you got systematic reviews which are more valuable in terms of what is known as 
a hierarchy of evidence this is the pyramid of evidence based medicine okay if you can see at the peak of this pyramid we have got meta analysis and systematic reviews and we come down these are the case reports and the clinical guidelines and some of the observational studies so in this uh, section today i will try to talk a little bit more about the randomized controlled trials because systematic reviews and meta analysis i do know that tomorrow there is a presentation but normally it is very difficult to undertake in our settings of course i am not saying you can't do but it is more difficult for a novice so what we can do is at the most we can always talk about randomized controlled trials they have got very good value in the evidence based medicine hierarchy so when you talk about randomized controlled trial again there has to be quality just because you pick up an article which is an rct doesn't mean that you can get it published as you so so shall you read so what i mean is the quality of the research that you perform is more important for you to the, the subsequently submit to the uh, journal and get it published so there are four minimum steps which have to be remembered when you perform a research with respect to the quality of the research first thing is choosing the correct topic and doing a thorough literature search second is raising the correct research question third is preparing and implementing the correct methodology and third is preparing the research proposal as per protocols okay so i will in brief touch up on these things one by one so that you can understand better when you even start the research itself so when you talk about the literature search so basically what you should know is what is known already in that particular field okay if you are trying to find out a new technique for uh, for example solving the patient's back pain if you want to find something new we should also know what is there already in the literature and what is already being practiced okay then provide a context for your research so in, in which is clinical scenario which set of patients you want to do they have to identify you can find other people working in your field so that there can be a mutual exchange either through online or go to some of the repositories which i will show you later on and next is you can identify the main methodologies and the techniques which is followed in the other publications and of course identify the gaps in literature so what somebody has not done or somebody could not do whether i can do so these are some of the things which you try to find out in your literature search where do you go for example simple if you are a student your own if you are trying to do a dissertation your guide will try to tell you something your senior will try to tell you something but ultimately what is uh, done is you are given a topic so what to how to go about it so what you can normally straight away do is go to a basic textbook in your field okay so you go to the particular chapter and read it and go to the bibliography or the references section there will be a list of references though my advice is is first you go to those references try to get them and read it and try to get the most recent edition of the book for example don't pick up a edition which is published 10 years ago because it's not updated most recent would be even if it is published this year there is some small limitation because publication process will take some time they would probably have a, a, a reference list which is probably updated about one year ago so something later would have happened but doesn't matter please go through that particular area and try to understand this is the first step which i will always suggest to my colleagues everywhere and google everybody has got a smartphone automatically our hand goes to the google but it is never advisable because it is confusing for you because anything you try you will get lakhs and lakhs of hits so what to read you don't understand so what you should be trying to search for the so called search engines and other sources are mainly the google scholar so what you can do is you can go to scholar.google.in or com then pubmed see normally in medical field the allopathic medicine we talk about the pubmed embase and cochrane reviews these are the three major sets of search engines cochrane review is the a site where the systematic reviews of a particular specialty are shown so if you are able to catch hold of a systematic review of your particular field you are the luckiest fellow because lot of research would have already been done and it is a secondary literature and lot of material will be available for you ready made then trial registries trial registry means if you have heard about the clinical trials registry of india and others so there are registries in across at least about 20 countries in the world where people who are trying to do a research they will register themselves with the topic and the details so we have got a clinical trial registry of india also so you can go there and you can get the material and university repositories also in your own university so this is the google scholar you can go and type your search words 
this is a pubmed you can go and set, uh, type your search words and this is mbis one of the problems with mbis is it is a paid one so if it is a bigger institution if it is licensed you can use this facility but pubmed is luckily still you know free for trying to do a search then this is a cochrane database of systematic reviews as i told you already this is also free for some of the countries including india they are refer represented as you know lower middle income countries so for in advanced countries in other places you have to pay for that also then this is the clinical trials registry of india you can always go to this website you can just register yourself and after registering you can always see what have been the registered trials this is one i i i wish all of you try to see and uh, update yourself because it is one of the best things to happen in india and it has picked up pace in the last 5 years especially and i said in the digital library it could be a gardiyakes or your own uh, uh, jss mahavidyapitha in your own library you can have lot of material which can be read and access with respect to your own research so choosing the correct topic and thorough literature search and then critically assessing it is most important it helps in raising the correct research question and decide on the correct methodology for your study and also one advantage is as i told already there can be limitations in the previous evidences and your planned research because you are ready to undertake it you can improve it and better validation for your results can also be obtained the second one is raising the correct research question see whenever you start a research you want to find out something so that i simply refer to as research question so you want to see that the disease condition improves you want to see that the pain a patient's pain comes down you want to see that uh, the patient's blood pressure comes down you want to see that the patient's uh, you know blood sugar comes down an investigative report becomes better so these are some of the things which you talk about so we have to decide beforehand which is the best research question in this particular research which i am undertaking so for this we have got a mnemonic okay this mnemonic is called f i n e or finer okay so f stands for feasibility i is for interesting n is for novelty e for ethical ethically correct research r is for relevant so for example if you are trying to do a study in uh, you know the jss uh, the, the physiotherapy institute i got a small uh, example of a title here already published comparison of hold relax technique and active release technique in shoulder impingement syndrome okay so i want to undertake this so if you want to do this first of all you should decide whether is it feasible to do in your institution okay first of all in terms of the numbers do you have enough number of patients attending to your outpatient with shoulder impingement syndrome if you are getting only about one patient per month and you want to say i want to do in 50 cases in a matter of one year is it possible it's not possible and also whether you have got all the help with respect to the examination of the patients investigations of the patient patients monitoring follow up of the patient so these are all referred to as the feasibility factors with respect to that study so whether it is feasible to do in your institution you should first decide if it's not your individual decision we have to consult your guide and you have to consult your institution and others then decide then number 2 is whether it is interesting interesting means it should be interesting for you to do it so just because somebody says please do it and uh, someone nobody has done so we cannot because only an interested person will be able to do a thorough justice to the topic that is chosen and it can be taken forward also so it should be interesting to the researcher very important and it should be novel n for novel means novelty should be there run of the mill somebody has done uh, and it, there has been hundreds of publication in a field there is no use doing the same study in your institution again so definitely outcomes are not expected to be different it will be similar to whatever has published already number one it's not going to change your practice also and most important as we are discussing today it will not be published at all so these are the problems if it is not novel next is ethical of course ethical considerations are always there don't try for the sake of publication something new because if it is unethical you are not supposed to do okay ethical in terms of the patient safety and every factor finally it should be relevant to the practice relevant means today i finish my research i compile my data and, and i analyze everything i find it very useful for practice okay and i will implement it in my own institution immediately 
So this is relevant to the practice. So which is relevant to the practice only something like that you have to choose. Don't again choose something which is very unusual. You don't choose a disease which is, for example, endemic in Mediterranean and try to say that I'm going to do it in Mysore. Okay, that's not the way you take it forward. Secondly, so when I said that finer criteria, the finer criteria is like preparing a cricket pitch. Okay, we have done everything, identified everything. Now we have to frame certain rules and regulations. So these rules and regulations with respect to the implementing the correct methodology is again referred to by another mnemonic called PICOT. So if you can see here, P represents the population, I represent the intervention, C represents the comparator, O represents the outcome, and T represents the time. So what is it? So again, going back to the same title, possible research title, P. Again, P is it represents the, the patients or the particular group which you are trying to choose for the research. Okay, whether, as I told you already, the patients are identified in terms of the disease, in terms of the age, in terms of the sex and other things, okay, that you have to identify. You may say, so I want to pick up patients between 20 years to 50 years of age. Okay, something like that represents the patients suffering with that particular disease. Then I represents the intervention because I said I am taking an example of a randomized control trial where you have got at least two groups generally. The intervention group is active release technique and a Comparator group is normally a standard technique which is done in that particular area. It's called hold relax technique. And O represents the outcomes. What could be the outcome? So I, I can at least you know, guess because I'm not a specialist in physiotherapy. I can guess it's a pain relief and uh, the stiffness of uh, the joints that are involved. So what we should always say is, what is the outcome you are looking for? Pain relief in terms of visual analog scale. So that can be taken as the outcome criteria we also call it as primary outcome criteria. There can be others called as secondary outcome criteria. And finally, T is the time duration of the research for that particular patient. Okay, for example, the frequency of follow-up and the duration of the follow-up for that particular patient. For example, at zero time, you have examined the patient 10 minutes after the one of these interventions or standard management, four times a week and after four weeks. So this is the way you try to find out the PICOT for the patient. Okay. So I told you about what is known as finer and cut criteria for you to decide to take up a project. And this is a short list. So if it is done, these are identified, half your job is done with respect to the preparation of the study topic. So you have prepared this much. I am taking you step by step. This, imagine that I am the researcher, I would have brought to this level. Then what I should be doing is this research, I have to create a proposal. Otherwise it's called a synapsis for the dissertations. So you have a format which is preferred by the university, you enter everything, okay? And this is generally given to the university, to the ethics committee, okay? And when you submit this, basically, you have you can get, take guidance from some of the international statements. So Dr. Shaul also showed some of these in his slides. So basically, when I talk about the randomized control trials, we have got what is known as consort statement, consolidated standards of reporting trials. I don't want to go into the details, but everything from the title to abstract, introduction, methods, randomization, 24 point, 25 points are covered. So these are the ones which have to be picked up when you have completed your research and you want to submit for publication. Similarly, this is another uh, option. This is again, not at this point of time. This is normally part of the publication where you represent the whole flow of the study from the time you have assessed the patient for eligibility, subjected him to the study, then you have followed it up for the results, then tried in terms of numbers to analyze the patient. So if you have submitted an article for a journal, okay, if you have created a flow diagram like this, the editor will be very happy. Okay. This is not applicable to even randomized control trial. You can also do for observational studies, a flow diagram. So instead of reading through the depth of methodology, the reader will be happy to read it. And most important, the author will also be, I mean, the reader will be very happy to see what is happening and what is the outcome. So this is the most important part. So I will not go into the details again. I suggest that you go to this website called equator-network.org where there is a statement for all types of research randomized trials, observational trials, animal trials, everything is available. You please download them 
and read. So you may not understand the first time, but you can understand better as you go forward. Third thing is submission of the research proposal as per protocols, as I told you, uh, with respect to the ethics committee and all. Actually, I know tomorrow also there is a, a topic which is being presented, but I'm going to touch upon this in brief. Even the previous uh, uh, speaker was also speaking about the same thing. This research proposal submission is actually a summary of uh, what all you want to do in your research is mainly attributed not just to the methodological aspects, but to the ethical aspects, the patient tax consents, the government approvals, and all is included. And there is also a statement about the funding and the sponsorship. So these are also very important in long term. And again, this is also a scope for informing whether you want the trial to be registered in a clinical trials registry. In fact, for this also there are guidelines. WHO has got a guideline of how to, you want to submit a research proposal to your hospital when you want to conduct a research. So imagine that the ethics committee has approved your research. Okay, you have taken the study forward. Now we have to implement the study. Okay, so for example, as I said, RCT or randomized control trials occupy the highest level in the hierarchy of evidence-based medicine at our level because I am discounting the systematic reviews and uh, you know, meta-analysis now. One advantage and why it occupies the highest position is, it is the one type of trial where bias is attempted to be removed as much as possible. So minimizing the bias means I got one group, I got two groups to compare. So if I know that this group is going to receive this type of drug or this type of uh, surgery or some, in, some material, and the other one, this is a different one. And if I know that the second one is good than the first one. Okay, so there is a prefix idea in my mind that all the drugs or the techniques I do in the second group would be better off and results will be better in those groups. So this is one example of my bias, personal bias. So this can be removed by three options. One is called as randomization. Second is allocation concealment of these randomized numbers. Third is a blinding. So if all these three things are taken care, and this has to be put in paper when you're trying to submit the manuscript. You have to write. So this is a randomized control trial. So we performed randomization by this technique. We performed allocation concealed by, by this technique. And we had blinding at this stage. So if these things are clearly entered, then again, the editorial board and the reviewers will be very happy. And this will carry a higher weight in terms of chances of publication. Now coming to the preparation of the manuscript and submission. Largely we have got guidelines, okay, with respect to how to prepare the manuscript and submission. Again, some of them were discussed in the previous presentation, including language issues and plagiarism. Again, at the cost of uh, some repetition, it will be there. It will be good for all of us again. And the most important topic is at the end, we have to understand how the system works. The system of editing, reviewing, and publication process also works. We should be knowing because they are the ones who are going to decide the fate of the submission for publication purposes. So when you talk about the guidelines for preparation and publication, one thing is journal instructions are always available in the website of the journal. Okay, basically that is there. But all the biomedical journals, more than 90% of the journals across the world depend upon these two international bodies one is the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors and then the Committee on Publication Ethics. So these are the ones which are there. And again, if you are interested, go there. They are very good sites and all the details with respect to the publication process, review and editing and ethics and authorship, everything is clearly given. Okay. So this is the one. Then this is the Committee of Publication Ethics also. This also gives uh, many answers to all your queries. And from these two, we have got the journal recommendations or guidelines when you reach the journal website. Okay. So the research results are more likely to be reproducible and acceptable for publication if the above recommendations are followed. This is a standard statement that is used everywhere. So you are not the king. You have got to follow a sequence and a system that is created and accepted across the world. And even when there is no clear novelty in the study. So this is my personal experience and both as an author and as an editor also and as a reviewer. So if there is a run of the mill article, when I said even if the topic is not innovative, if I have done my methodology and if I have done all the things and put it in the manuscript as per the recommendations and guidelines, 
there will be no hesitancy on the part of the editor to accept it majority of the times okay, of course it should not be too bad a topic a bad topic even the best prepared one will not be accepted but an average topic is more likely to make it if you have prepared it nicely so you please keep in mind so the quality of the preparation of the manuscript is very important so when you want to submit what do you do normally we just go to the journal website we have to register as an author and you will get a username and password then you log in to what is known as a submission area and first thing generally so this applies to again more than 90% of journals you you will be asked to type the title and the type of the article in a drop down menu because you have got multiple types of submissions and types of articles authorship details so you can have the full list of authors their affiliations and their current position and the email ids and other things and this was also um discussed previously they will have what is known as a cover page file or title file or first page file where as an author you can address the to the editor directly sir i am submitting such and such a file um topic and please consider and this is my experience in the field and all. this is the way you write this is very important because when i was editor i will definitely be put off by a cover page file where somebody sends a cover page file writing that title of the topic type word count but so there is nothing else that is entered in here so it is not just related to courtesy it's also related to your interest you are going to discuss beforehand with the editor so that's the way it is taken forward afterwards there is an area for <clears throat> putting up putting your abstract and abstract so generally for publication purposes is asked for all types of articles even though it is not published okay for some type of articles we don't need an abstract when it is published but it is there in the system the reason i'll tell you later on and there is what is known as a main article file and again this main article file is double blinded double blinded means it doesn't contain the names of and, and others of the authors and when it goes to a reviewer reviewer will not know who the author is and when the author is receiving an input from the reviewer he doesn't know who is the reviewer so both of them know, don't know who it is so it's called double blinded review also in many of the journals nowadays and of course there are areas for uploading your images audio and video also are uploadable nowadays there is contributor form or conflict of interest form acknowledgments and sponsorship sometimes when you have some support from the institution some support from the outside companies sometimes not all times we will ask for patient consent especially if his image or something is shown and his consent for publication of that report is also important and if you are reproduced image and tables from some other publication you must have obtained permission from them and that should be explicitly shared with the editor and some of the journals will at the initial stage itself ask you to paste a plagiarism report okay the journal itself have an option but sometimes at a screening method so it will ask you to provide through one of the free sites and submit and unusually we may also ask about the ethics committee of approval if you are not sure that something has not been done properly and the clinical trials registration so this is the way the system would work normally for example if you go into the one of the journals you know this is the way the username and password is there and you have to register okay you can register yourself fresh and this is the way you submit so when i was trying to access this journal and went inside and there was a published article something like this here so can you see this on the left side so there is a link to the subheadings and all abstract keywords introduction materials methods and all this is the same as dr shaul was talking about about this particular topic the imbrot pattern that is shown and i am adding another thing called takkar here t a s k a r followed by imbrot so these are beautiful you know these are mnemonics which you can remember so that you try to recollect what is important so what is this takkar takkar is again i am created a different style now it is also acceptable you have to know about the importance of title the importance of abstract importance of keywords and importance of references only so can you see this t a k a r this is the way it is discussed so each one is very important so for example the title definitely would normally convey the main research question it can sometimes convey the design sometimes convey the outcome criteria with or without the mention of outcome sometimes also it should not be too long and too short which was discussed again a few minutes ago it can end with query in some instances and one thing also the editor would ask or at least at the time of acceptance is a brief running title so if you have seen some of the journal, many of the journals 
So at the top of uh, the second page, third page, fourth page or something or in the alternate pages, there will be a brief title along with the presenting of the main author. So something like this. See, you can see Geetika Arya et al. Clinical study to evaluate the effect of Mustadi Kvat in Madhumeha. So this is normally up to about 60 characters. That's also us. Please remember that also. You also try to give it properly. So look at this title. Comparison of children's self-report and nurses' assessment of pain. Okay, do you think this is an acceptable format here for a title? So what they are written is comparison of children's self-report and nurses' assessment of pain. This is one of the nursing journals. I don't think it is uh, too correct because they have not mentioned about the you know, design. I would be happy with the representation of the design of the study, at least in brief. Second thing is comparison of ipsilateral versus contralateral lower limb neural mobilization, unilateral lumbar radiculopathy, a randomized control trial. Okay. So here, what they have represented is they have also represented the design of the study. This is very important because even if somebody looks at it, because it's a randomized control trial, it also carries a lot of value. Okay. So people will be able to trust your results better if it is an RCT. If you don't put it, people will not know whether it is an RCT or not because we have got also non-randomized control trials also. Then this is something called protective effect of terminalia or you know, against alcohol-induced oxidative damage of rat erythrocyte membranes. Okay, this is broadly acceptable, but I don't find the, the design here and I don't find exactly the most important aspect of the outcome. Okay, that also has to be shown. And the last one appears to be better and it also ends with a query. Does the severity of preoperative anemia or blood transfusion have a stronger impact on long-term survival of the cardiac surgery? See, you have mentioned about an outcome, long-term survival. Okay. Then what is the intervention, pre-op anemia or blood transfusion? Okay. And specifically after cardiac surgery. So we should also be thinking in terms of correct titles because your, these are the ones which people are going to read. So try to include the PICAD criteria, population, intervention, control, outcomes, and time if possible. Design ideally to be given. Main outcome, again, as part of the outcome, it's better to be given. And it may end with query. I am not making it mandatory here. So second part of this structure is the abstract part. Again, it is a summary of what all is uh, done by you in the huge project. Because even if you have opened a journal, I do, I do that. When you have a printed journal or you get a PDF of the journal, you first look at the abstract. If the abstract impresses you, you are going to read further. Otherwise, you are not going to read. Okay? It's like the first impression would be the best impression. So you have to prepare a nice abstract so that the people will read your article. Okay. Generally, that's the reason they have to be clarity because if you have got a word limit, which we discussed already, I will tell you again. It has to be brief one, but it will be focused on also. Background and names must be clear. You must, as much as possible, represent the PICAT aspect, design and the statistics. Results, only important parts of the results. Don't put the whole list of results here. Starting from demography, we don't need it. And conclusion should be brief and focused okay? and shall not have citations of references. Sometimes it's a mistake. Uh, we are not going to put any reference citations here. So, for example, this is a structured abstract, which Dr. Shaul also discussed. There will be clear subdivisions of different things. And they say normally 250 to 300 words are not expected to be crossed. Then with unstructured abstracts, normally for case report and review, so it's about 150 words. So there are no subheadings if we can see. But going further, okay, at the bottom, you have got these keywords, okay, how to get them. So I'm slightly giving a little bit more information here. It, by definition, it represents the most frequently used academic words or the phrases in the article. Sometimes it could be a phrase which is widely accepted of about two to three words also. And one thing is when you prepare the keywords, okay, these keywords, if somebody reads, he is going to put this, if he is using a similar keyword and is putting in the search engine, okay, he is likely to get your journal among the top journals. Okay, so that is one advantage that you have to use the right keywords. For this purpose, there is a website called Mesh, M-E-S-H, which is part of the PubMed. Okay, I will show you in brief uh, the website only. So generally six to eight for an average uh, publication is uh, required. If you use a wrong keyword, the opposite happens. So people, uh, there will be poor hits when they search, there will be poor citation because now we cannot say, no, we are into internet era. 
So everybody goes to the website only. If you, if you type something, okay, if you are done correctly, your article will open. Otherwise, it will not open. So this is a sub window uh, is associated with the PubMed website. It is called Medical Subject Headings, M-E-S-H. Okay, there is an area called Mesh and Demand. I will not go into the details uh, here. It's like what is known as Mesh on Demand. If you click on that, and if you paste your material, your write-up, if you paste there, you can get a list of the keywords. It not be that eight to 10, you may get about 20 to 30 keywords, and you should use your knowledge and discretion to bring it down to that eight keywords and use them as a keywords for submission to publication, okay? So finally, the TEA, KEA, or R is a referencing part. R is referencing first most important ethical aspect is you are trying to acknowledge somebody else's publication because he has done a hard work. So we must acknowledge somebody's good work that is done already. They also act as sources of information and you are also trying to pick up some ideas from the study. Okay, that's the way referencing is there as per, as per the tradition. Okay, advantages are it helps the reader to, the interested reader also. So I have read an article, I got some doubt. I'll go to the end of the chapter, that particular published article, go to the references, pick up that, try to see whether the, what is there, verify the methodology, verify the data on discussion. And I will also be able to raise new research questions and helps in avoiding plagiarism. It is most important aspect, plagiarism. So that has been a, a, an innocent happening in India for many years because many of us don't know about plagiarism. We just copy paste from other published material. So, but it is not allowed in the publishing industry because it's just like copy. So how many references, how they are arranged and all. So generally references, we have a number for each one of the published article. Majority of the journals, we follow a vancouver style. Vancouver style is the number is given as per the order. They are cited in the material in an ascending or consecutive order. Okay. Secondly, where it is mentioned. So generally references are mentioned mainly in the introduction, but it should be very few. Sometimes I've seen in the introduction about 20 references for a short introduction of only about 100 words. So it's not correct. This was also discussed by Dr. Shahul previously because just you are trying to convey the background of the study, what you want to find out in the study, in the introduction part only, along with some literature review. Okay, much of the uh, citations are there in the discussion part. Okay, references in methodology are not normally there. They are only referred, cited there for some grading, classification of or a validated scoring system, which you are using in your study. And it shall never be there in the abstract and conclusion. And I, very unfortunately, I have seen people adding a conclusion for the first time in the article at end in the conclusion and in the last one or two sentences. Okay, so that is not accepted because a conclusion is a conclusion of what all you have done. And how many? There are guidelines, for example, for randomized control trials. It, it's generally, okay, not average for majority of the journals. For randomized control trial, they will say you, you can have about 20 to 25. For a case report, you can have about 10. For a letter creator, you can have about 5 to 6. And for generally systematic reviews and meta-analysis, there is not a limit because they are huge projects. Okay, approximately it will be about one reference per 100 words published. Okay, then style of referencing is also mentioned in the guidelines. That also counts a lot when you're trying to submit an article for publication. You just go to the journal website and all and try to see. There is a different style for the textbooks, journals, for example, and the monologues also. So for example, this one is for the journals, basically. Then this one is for the textbook per se, okay? Then this one is for an online access. So whenever you are done an online access, you are expected to mention the date of access of that online resource. Because you would have accessed something about three months ago. Yes, you would have seen perfectly, it would be a good one. But due to some reason, when I mean, it is published and somebody is not able to find it, okay? So you are not wrong, but you have to commit that it has been done previously. And the last one, uh, it's called MedArchive. If you can see here, so MedArchive is uh, a recent one which has come. Uh, one thing is, this is uh, a repository of uh, even the articles which are yet to be pre-reviewed reviewed or in the process of review. Okay, so pre-COVID, 
it was the habit among our editorial group that we will not accept mid archive as a reference but what happened in the last two years because of the extreme number of publications related to covid and there was no time for review also and because there was a hunger for knowledge related to covid mid archive has also been allowed to be shown as a reference and a number of authors as part of uh, in the referencing is normally uh, there is a there is a style and pattern generally we don't allow more than six authors names to be entered then with respect to the referencing don't use very old references of 40 years 50 years 70 years 80 years okay that means you are not doing a research research is research trying to do something new but don't try to use very old references in your article it should be within the last 5 to 10 years only again coming back to imbroad in brief i will not go into the details it has been discussed in broad already the main article file will have all these things the introduction again it, it's already discussed it's purely about uh, the purpose and summary for uh, the study or the observation to be done brief background related to the study and only about four to six references to be cited and slight i mean a, a, a limited mention of games and objectives in brief okay so this is the introduction so if you can see this is not more than about 100 words for an original article only about three most important citations have been done okay this is very important you should not be adding more than 10 15 like that and in the method section now you are that pike thing will come into discussion p i c o t what you are trying to put here is first is the ethical aspects and all you can say this study is conducted in this institution without naming the institution as already discussed ethical committee approval was taken then this was the registration number of ethical committee patient consent was taken with prior information which is shared and any mandatory approvals related to a particular drug or a new agent or a new device which you are going to use that also must be mentioned here clearly okay second thing is the duration of the study how long you have conducted the study that is very important. these are the ones which are missed out the reason i am giving this list is if you follow all these and especially i showed you about the 25 point consort statement no editor will be able to reject it straight away then study design okay that you have to mention whether it is observational study or it is a randomized study or blinding or whatever inclusion exclusion criteria clearly so don't add the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria okay this is also done as part of uh, you know in some institutions it is done so if i say i'm going to pick up patients from 15 to 50 years as an inclusion i should not be writing in the exclusion patients below 15 years patients above 50 years okay it is it is you know illogical so keep a simple list of inclusion a simple list of exclusion that's very important assignment of interventions if it is randomized controlled trial clearly you have to write what you are trying to do for the patient then outcome parameters i told you already primary and secondary outcome parameters at a basic level if i say again go back to that physiotherapy article if i say that i, I try two types of manipulation for the shoulder impingement syndrome outcomes can be many for example it could be subjective and objective subjective means in the sense uh, the patient himself or herself will say, I have become comfortable, sir. My, I am able to attend to work. I am able to do my daily shows and all and everything. But when you try to ascend, assess the patient, also there will be pain relief. And if you do all range of movements, there won't be pain. Stiffness would be gone. Okay, so many criteria are there. So we must clearly pick up one primary outcome criteria because it's also important for sample size. I'm not discussing. It could be there tomorrow also. You have to pick up set only one primary criteria or secondary criteria will be rest of them it could be one two three four five never mind and you should also mention clearly in the written material so we did randomization using this technique using this software this website okay allocation concealment was done for example by what is known as snooze technique then we did a blinding we did a blinding for one person blinding for the patient blinding for the observer so these are the methods which you must explain in the material. And you should also say, I have used validated measurement tools. Okay, for example, if I say that the, some patient had got control of bronchial asthma, okay, with a bronchodilator or any drug which you have used. So if I say there was a mild improvement, moderate improvement, severe improvement, or significant improvement, or total improvement, 
i cannot be creating a table by, by myself it's not accepted because anything you do in terms of scoring systems or classifications must be validated and validation with trying to do in 30 patients or 50 patients is not acceptable for this you need huge sample size and there are some statistical tests to be done okay this is not the forum to talk about this now but just for you to understand we should be using validated published tools not your own don't think you are the master of everything at this point of time and data collection you have done the study then you have collected all the values and the data outcomes again uh, there is a repetition but we have to mention the actual p values okay there is a habit okay this is significant not significant like that that should not be done so you should write clearly we took just in the in the methodology you would have written p value for example uh, less than 0.001 is taken as significant so if it is done okay but in the table or graph or whatever wherever you must put the actual values and leave it to the reader to understand its significance okay that's important and sample size calculation and uh, must be clearly mentioned i will not go into the details and for the statistics you must mention the software the version that is used and whether which are the categorical variables or which are the quantitative variables in that again it doesn't fall into today's discussion and the tables graphs and acknowledge and the whatever are published there is a number count which is there for all the journals so we cannot be publishing 10 20 images and other things okay so there is a number which is recommended and if you are use somebody else's material you must also acknowledge as i told you already next is in results also there is one more problem for example if you have got to if you are talking about for example vas in terms of pain relief if you are talking in terms of range of movements for the patient and if you are talking in terms of improvement in the patient's life state if you take these three factors that's the way you would have put your proposal and that's the way you would have put it in your methods i want to assess the improvement in terms of vas i want to assess in terms of increase in mobility i want to say check in terms of the patient's lifestyle the same way the result should be put i should not be putting the improvement in lifestyle data first i should not be putting the improvement in the range of movements first i should be putting the vas first the same thing should happen in discussion also okay so that's a problem which you have encountered as a reader also and there should not be repetition in the data you got a graph you have got a table you have got a graph you have got a table it is again illogical it occupies precious publication space definitely publisher and editor will not be happy number one number two it is not useful at all okay that is never useful so you choose whether a particular data is best conveyed with a table or best conveyed with a graph okay then units of measurement in tables and graphs this is also very important because we talk about you know french units and uh, you know international units and many other things we must mention the units of measurement when you have put a value in a table okay and group names again the last one is very important okay if you have got two groups i, I told you about uh, the two techniques for uh, you know the shoulder impingement syndrome so if it is uh, a if you are given for one unit, one one group if you give a you would have given b to the other it is the one which is mentioned in the methodology by the time it comes to results the a and b would have become one and two and later on in discussion it would have become h and a even this has happened so this is the one which will be very irksome to the editor and even the reviewers they will point out that these are the things which the author has done and sometimes when you are that n being mentioned okay i saw some of the tables being shared by our esteemed previous speaker also so they would have put all the data this many patients had this problem like this problem total number will not sum up okay if we are the sample size is 50 the total should be 50 in the end or as per the calculation but they will not account for a reduction that's okay they may describe later but they would have added more numbers also so these are some basic mistakes that is done that will not represent a quality research by the author so this is a flow chart i was telling already whatever is done no we can put this in table from top to bottom we can say i picked up this many patients i removed some this many patients because they were not eligible they did not want to participate then i allotted them to this group and this group and each level what happened zero week what happened fourth week half what happened 12th week what happened 26th week what happened so this is the way if you put something like this no 
it is not just for the reader even the reviewer and the editor will be pleased yes this is done perfectly i will take it up discussion again uh, i will not go into the details this has been discussed by our previous uh, presenter very nicely what is missing sometimes is with clarity comparison with previous work or relevant studies are not done so this is very important we must be talking about the previous studies because it is never an original study majority of the times okay you have not picked up some other material you should acknowledge and say what is done by others what is good with them and what is different from our own current research also okay and always mention the confounding variables in our article okay the strengths and weaknesses of our study say i could not do that and limitations of the study that is very important and practical relevance when i say that finer the relevance also should come in the discussion and you should say yes this is going to work in practice it is going to help the patients and the society and future research direction I have done this much in my small group 30 patients and 50 patients i could not do this probably a future some other researcher would be able to do these things and we can get better data and information okay so it has to be very concise with respect to the the, the volume of words and the number of words that is used and conclusion finally coming to conclusion should be very succinct it has to match with the aims of the study if your aim of the study is to say that the pain score will come down that has to be mentioned here okay this there has been discrepancies in this aspect also whenever many papers are issued by us as editors and unqualified statements and adjectives are avoided here again just to cite so our study pro provided excellent um results with respect to the patient outcomes no it's not excellent you cannot be using your own opinion it cannot be taken as excellent okay they will say our study uh, is uh, has come to the conclusion and no it's also not accepted you should not say intervention like this may be associated with improvements may be associated with better outcomes can be associated with better outcomes but there can never be an affirmative sentence here okay avoid conclusion not supported by data also don't say anything new which you have not done the research for okay no references in conclusion no tables and bulleted matter again i have seen people of course not many they will put a list for conclusion also 1 2 3 4 5 6 and they would have given tables also okay that is not a, a protocol i am not saying it's not correct at your personal level but there is a system everywhere Okay, so the decency and uh, the, the 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 flow must be maintained there also. Language majority of the journals will say clearly that they follow American English or British English. So we have to follow those guidelines. And of course, we are Indians. We may not be good in English. So what we should do is, if you have got problem, you can do a language check with MS Word, or you can get in touch with a language expert. He will be able to help you out. There is no problem at all. Or your own colleague who is good in English. Okay, I may not be good, but there is a colleague who is good and try to use his services in fact poor language can be a ground for rejection of articles this is possible because uh, it to some extent i can say okay as an editor or reviewer in fact i was receiving uh, now i am not trying to degrade uh, the scientific acumen but i was receiving lot of articles from the middle east okay uh, problem is prob either they have done the language themselves or they have taken the help of an expert but that flow of language is never good okay so if such is the condition it is very difficult for an editor or reviewer to redo the whole thing and we are forced to reject those submissions okay and another important thing is expansions of appropriations must always be used in a submission okay straight away in the title if you are using it's not accepted in the abstract also use abbreviation later on but first time you have to expand it and subheadings also there is a limited number of subheadings in majority of the journals okay don't keep on putting 10 20 subheadings there it's also not part of the recommendations and with respect to reproduction and other copyright i told you already patient's permission would be needed sometimes you have to reproduce image of the patient sometimes you have to take the consent especially and when you are publishing it there has to be some method of masking the facial recognition of the patient and i am coming towards end another few slides here you have see heard about these two persons okay this is uh, dr bolt from germany 
not Hussein Bolt, the other famous person, all of you would know. And this is Fuji. Okay, it's not Fuji Films alone. Again, it's a different person here. They are notorious in the world because they have got the highest number of plagiarism reports against them. Okay, so both of, especially Bolt has been jailed also in Germany. He escaped. It's like a cinema thriller also. And Fuji. And problem is both of them were authorities in their own field. Authorities means you know. So they were authorities. They were called everywhere to present, you know, presentations and lectures everywhere. Their articles were cited in critical care medicine and anesthesia medicine. This person was famous for colloids. This person was very famous for post-operative nausea vomiting treatment and prophylaxis. Everywhere it is published and it was shown. So people started believing them and started prescribing. Imagine, is there any benefit to the patients or probably there was problem to the patient also. So this is a problem with the plagiarism. So this must be avoided. In fact, by definition, it is use of others published and unpublished ideas or words or other intellectual property without attribution or permission and presenting them as new and original rather than derived from the existing source. Okay, This is the one. And you've got a lot of free uh, websites which are available. But basically, majority of the journals, we have about three to four quality paid ones. For example, Turnitin is one. Authenticate is one. For example, I have used these two. In my journal, Indian Journal of Anesthesia, we used to use Authenticate. For each use, we used to pay one dollar. Okay, That is the quality of this paid software also. So anyway, finally, uh, we have to understand the editorial process also. You have to stick to timelines. When you are given time for review for about one week or 10 days, please don't delay it. Don't be aggressive against the reviewers and the editor. Sometimes when I, as a reviewer, I put some 10 comments. I am expecting some sort of response from the author that because I am an authority, I would have read as an example. But if it is not allowed, I could not be doing anything else. And I will be put off by this. I will say this author has not responded to the queries properly. And I will recommend to the editor that you please don't accept it. Okay, so there is a method to respond also, address to the reviewer as a sir also, sir, be gentle, I, I understand your remarks, however, these are my clarifications, so that's the way you have to respond, it's trying to say no, this is not correct, I have attended, it's also not acceptable, and the reviewer process, the whole reviewer process also is very important, I told you again, you have to be very decent, in fact, I have got at least uh, about 15 to 20 authors, where they attempted revisions 25 to 28 times. Imagine. And then I got their article published. Okay, So that's the importance of reviewing and the importance of quality and the importance of publication there. So for a beginner, again, don't attempt systematic reviews and meta-analysis. What I would advise is you try to write letters to editor and correspondence. Okay. Letter to editor doesn't mean uh, just writing a letter in, uh, as a comment to some published article. It's also your own small experience or a case report or whatever is also accepted as a correspondence and letter to editor. Try to know the online system, review system, editing system, publication system. It will be accepted. If it is accepted, your language will improve, your academics will improve and will become more confident. So these failures are generally the stepping stones to success. But you should always know that there are some common reasons for rejection. The study did not examine an important issue. Study is not of interest to targeted journal. It is not original enough, novel enough, and it is already done by somebody else. Layout and draft is very sloppy, very poor English, as I told you already. Sample size is too small, and study was uncontrolled, inadequately controlled. These are some of the examples. There are too many. But again, as I told you, failure is a stepping stone to success. So don't be pessimistic. So try to attempt everything. You might, after about eight steps, you might reach here also. Okay. So this is the way we take it forward. Thank you very much for uh, patient listening. Because uh, um, this flow was required, I didn't come in between for uh, responding to the questions in the chat box. Now I think we can take it forward with uh, the permission of the moderator. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you, sir. Over to uh, a moderator, uh, Dr. Dilip. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The session was very wonderful and very informative. I'm checking for the chat box.
And so the chat box will end any questions right now. There is a question in the question answer. Does plagiarism software matter in checking plagiarism? Type of plagiarism software, I think, is a question. Yeah. So, as I told you, there are, if you just Google and enter into the system, there are at least four to five minimum. For example, plagiarismod.com. So, you just go the very, even the Google has got a plagiarism check. Basically, you can do initial filtering. Only thing is, what they do is, they will ask you to paste only about 1,000 words each time. Okay. In a licensed version, you can paste everything what you have written into that uh, box and it will do a plagiarism check and give a report. If it is a free one, you have to paste the only about 1,000 words each time. You should remove the citations which are entered in the bracket, remove all the tables and graphs and paste the text material. Okay, Then it will give a report. Then again, you have to paste another 1,000 words. So that's not a problem, but they are fairly good basically as a screening tool and gives you satisfaction because we cannot afford to again register and pay. And if the institution has got a plagiarism software, definitely can utilize it. So there's another question in question and answer. Is yeah. publishing an article in Web of Science lower than Scopus? You mean the, the importance or the value? That's what in, the, the I think they mean indexing, whether the indexing site has value. Yeah, if you, that's why again, I will go back to the statement of Dr. Shahul. For example, Medical Council of India. I don't know about our uh, Ayush colleagues and other specialties, basically, and the Dental Council. Um, we have got about uh, five, index, five indexing agencies which are recognized by the Medical Council, where there is uh, the Citation index, which in the sense which is a part of uh, the ESI, which we call the Web of Science. Then, of course, there is PubMed, then there is Scopus, then there is uh, the Directory of Open Access Journals. So, these are some of the agencies which are accepted. So, if uh, the, the journal you are submitting to or is getting published, if it is not indexed in any of these five agencies, they are not recognized by the Medical Council for the sake of appointment and promotions. But my take is otherwise. My take is don't worry about the indexing in the initial part of uh, your scientific uh, career. So you can submit to different journals, try to see that they are published and you develop your own self-confidence. Okay, straight away telling that I am going to submit to a journal of high impact factor. It will be, I am not dis discouraging, they will straight away reject an article if you are not followed the protocol. Okay, so if you have got a very good scientific uh, you know, environment, could be there in, for example, JSS physiotherapy hospital. If it is done, it will be good. But if there is a novice who is trying to do something for the first time, okay, trying to submit to the highest uh, impact factor journal, it will be difficult for publication. I am not discouraging, but it is difficult. So try to go to the next level of journals, publish it, then become confident, then submit to other journals. That's the way you should take it forward. Thank you, sir. Anything else I'm not able to do. Okay. Mm, sir, one more. Yeah. Uh, does a single author paper good for the field and the researcher and add on that one ideal number of the co-author and research publication? See, with respect to the authorship criteria, we, the COPE, I told you, the Committee of uh, Publication Ethics and the ICMJ clearly have guidelines. Okay. And... Uh, at the most basic level of definition, they say that if the authors are able to convince the editor that each of them have fulfilled the criteria as per the regulations, that's okay. That's a basic definition. Number one. Number two is, if you have heard about the Human Genome Project, it was an international collaboration about uh, eight to 10 years ago. Uh -huh. They had uh, participants from more than about 40 countries with more than 2,000 authors. All the authors were included in the publication. No. Okay. So because all of them contributed in very significant amount. And if you think in terms of, for example, uh, you, you talk about um, uh, uh, insulin, discovery of insulin in Banting and West, only two people were there. If you talk about Darwin, he was the only one person who talk, talked about something. Newton was a single person. 
Okay. So this, those, they are called as seminal studies and researches. So they happen once in a while. But somebody trying to say this is my research article, I have done it alone, is not acceptable in current times. It is okay. physically, practically not possible, and definitely editor will not accept it. Okay. So the ideal number for the co-author. Ideal number for the co-author generally what uh, the journal says. Again, there are there is no uniformity. based upon the type of the article for example if it is a research article randomized control trials which i am trying to talk about i was talking about about 8 to 10 is accepted okay okay so if it is a case report majority of the journals will say we will not allow more than 4 okay if the fifth person is required you have to justify it and if you pressurize us we will say we can be added under acknowledgments at the end that so and so helped in the research along with the authors Okay, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. One more. How long do we wait to hear from the journal, sir? After we submitted our manuscript. Okay, turnover is uh, again left to the individual journals based on the load. Mm, if you see the recent predatory journals which were there in India, unfortunately they have come down in the last five years. I mean, last one year. But one indexing agency, Copernicus Index, Copernicus has been removed by the, the National Medical Council for medical fields. um they had created a havoc basically uh, given uh, people from small sheds used to publish journals okay, okay. so they would uh, publish today you submit along with money tomorrow they will publish so that was a problem so i am i'm not talking about those journals uh -huh. standard journals basically they have a certain timeline also and we as editor for example if i say as an editor if i receive an article as an editor i will always take maximum one week to just open that particular submission uh -huh. and i allot you allot it to my associate editors or i will take it forward okay. and associate editor is again can see it for about 4 to 5 days then reviewers we normally give about 12 to 15 days okay then it will it will go back to the author after 15 days provided everything falls into place it uh -huh. will take about minimum of 3 months to come to some level of conclusion average uh -huh. and it is not practically so for majority of uh, the papers i think it will take between our uh, 5 to 6 months for final acceptance and publication will take about 8 to 9 months for a standard journal but one one thing i can always convey is if any of the authors want an acceptance certificate early pending publication majority of the editors and the journals are ready to give it because it's called advanced publication advanced access or ahead of print These are three different terminals ahead of print, so they will not be given the page numbers and issue numbers, but they are accepted and they are even put in the website for early viewing by the authors also. Thank you, sir. Is there any site or application for technical language in India? Somebody has asked. It is available in cities. Uh, english expert service is available and the grammarly.com is a site purely related to english for all the purposes not just for biomedical uh, you know publications and other things it's one thing which might help but we have got experts available in big cities and our own uh, the publication agencies have english language experts associated with them they do english language check So that is there with bigger publishing agencies like Borders Global. So there is another question: errors. What are the errors we commit in writing, and points to be considered for technical writing? Common errors, perhaps. So very simple is it has to be very simple, straightforward English. We don't want exotic English. we don't want adjectives to be used and I, we don't want a link to the native language so on the lighter side for example in one of the submissions for me a author from delhi had written there are 101 reasons for this event happening okay so this 101 reason is what we normally speak in our the colloquial native language we say nura on the karana ide ante but nura on the karana ante helodu it's a colloquial language which we speak amongst ourselves it's not to be a, an academic language okay 
so when we write there you have to write clearly so there are important reasons for something like this to happen okay this is the one which comes with it there's a reason i said they have to go up with a letter to editor correspondence and up when you want to submit articles for example an investigation is done is not accepted an investigation is performed okay so we have to give value to your own field value to your own research okay you don't give injection you administer injection okay you perform a procedure you don't do a procedure so these are the ones which you can learn as you go ahead in uh, the thing that's the reason you should have read the textbooks also majority of the standard textbooks use this standard english also this is a scientific language or academic language which should be taken forward and no exclamations and no no adjectives for example dr shaul was telling that's excellent result and all perfect nothing of that should come never in results definitely not in discussion patient had a that this and all okay so please keep english simple straight forward nothing will happen more simple language is enough you are going to convey the results you are going to convey the discussion part what we found what others found and what is the reason for our finding what is wrong in our study what could be done better in our study very simple with respect to the preparation of the draft yes thank you sir no more questions in the chat box <coughs> uh thank you sir it was a great session the session kindled the interest in all of us to do more publication along with that it furnishes the instinct important and guidance for publishing a paper thank you once again sir today two eminent and striking speakers made us to indulge input which is much essential for any field to reach its maximum efficiency thanks for giving this more at opportunity to jesus institute of health sciences thank you personal What? thank you from me dr bal baskar and dr shahul thank you very much for accepting thank you. Thank uh, suddenly you. Thank, very, you. thank you for an interesting session thank you. all of us the word to dr vijay thank you dr shahul i could not uh, this is online thanks for the inputs i also learned a lot in between thanks sir <laughs> your session was also very informative <laughs> thanks sir <laughs> thank you sirs uh, and all the attendees uh, we have come to the end of the session today uh, so tomorrow again we have the second session uh, at 2 o'clock so we have two sessions tomorrow one by dr asha kamal uh, she will be talking on guidelines for reporting information in an article and choosing sampling methods for robust designs and also at 3:30 we have uh, a talk by dr sangamitra and it's on writing a successful grant proposal so i request all the attendees again to attend the second session and also please fill up the uh, forms the feedback forms which is uh, posted on the same day thank you all good evening thank you